Hello and welcome. My name is Corey Edmund Angelot. In this presentation, titled Sapientia Naturae, I go over a philosophy that may turn into, eventually in time, a book or a collection or somebody else may want to take on this task in time. Uh, of course, I don't want to focus necessarily all my time on this. Uh, so I decided to put it into a brief presentation format, although it can be greatly expanded upon. All the ideas that are presented here, although very useful in application when it comes to teaching and practicing within your life, it is something that could be explored even deeper than what is presented. But with this presentation, you'll get the brief outline you will get basically the essentials as to what this philosophy of nature entails. There's been many philosophies of nature, and this is to simply recollect most of them. Uh, not even, even all of them, because I don't think any one person can collect all of them. Um, but this one is one on behalf of my own observations and connections to nature. So take it as you will, uh, in combination with, of course, my studies of how other people have also interpreted nature. But looking at it at a very simplistic view and a holistic view, we can do both those things. Um, this is also titled Wisdom of Nature. So Sapientia uh, Naturae is Latin for Wisdom of Nature. Wisdom of Nature can be abbreviated as one which can also be spelled two different ways, W-O-N and O-N-E. That of which is to teach and practice. Because wisdom provides guidance, and the most that I can do as a human being in this life, all my works, is to simply guide individuals. And what am I ultimately guiding individuals toward? Well, it's toward understanding nature, connecting with nature, and knowing that, well, people will make statements such as, for example, we don't live in primitive times, or that, well, tornadoes and hurricanes are bad, so therefore there can be justifications made for not using nature as an argument, or seeing nature not as the answer. As my titles, I, uh, as my works, I often use the phrase, nature is the answer. And I use that phrase because of the great wisdom that we can find within nature, uh, understanding the good and the bad both, uh, and looking at it, breaking it down, which we can do and we will do throughout this presentation, which like I said, one last time, is more of a brief introduction into the world of nature because you have to experience it for yourself, make your own observations and learn about all these different natures for yourself. It will take time for humanity to learn anything in any case. Our first slide here is looking at nature. Nature is the source of all existence. All existence has a nature of its own. Nature is the all of all. Learning from nature means that you learn from every nature. This implies, of course, that there is nature and natures with an S. There's a one nature above the many natures throughout within. Learning from every nature, okay, those individual natures, such as human nature, or part of our human body, may you say the nature of a kidney, the nature of a liver, you may say is within the one body, the one human body. So learning from every nature means that you learn from cause and effect ultimately. That's what it means to learn from every nature because you're observing not just its impacts, but its causes, which led up to its impacts, its effects. And when people want to make a change in this world, they want to see, well, how is it I can make a change in the world? The question I might ask them is what is your cause to effect? What gets you going? What gets you motivated, right? What is your cause to effect? We're talking about cause and effect, but don't forget your cause to effect, okay? In order to make an effect, you have to first have a cause, okay? Now, a lot of people will use cause and effect uh, through a lot of different terminologies. We'll see how integral it is 
appear within nature. Now, the word natural is that of nature, okay? So natural, that of nature. All natural existence has always existed. So in distinction between natures of different kinds, uh, the natural is that more of nature, and the unnatural is that less of nature. Okay, so all of nature is this existence, right? And within that existence, you have natures. And they all have their own individual nature that requires to learning. And as we saw earlier, uh, it's about learning from cause and effect, because then we understand its impacts, and therefore may you say its behavior, its condition, um, any of the words you want to use to describe how we understand something um, by what it's doing, right? By what it is. And so when we see that the natural is more of nature and the unnatural is less of nature, we can't just say, well, this is natural, that is unnatural, because again, we're assuming that all the natures are under nature. So technically, you can say everything is natural, but then you may say, to clarify, everything that is real is natural. And then if you were to break down the word real, you would come back to the word natural. This can get very confusing for individuals, which is why I'm breaking it down in this presentation. And sometimes it's better I speak less and have my words more collected and organized on screen on paper. So ultimately, however, we learn of natures to optimize natures just by the nature of my word usage or the nature of one word or another word or one word's definition, another word's definition. I mean, you have a billion natures just to look at right there. And then the nature of perception, how people perceive those words, the nature of language, how it's being told, how it's being said, the tone of voice, all these things that you'd have to keep into account. And you understand that studying this life goes far deeper than just looking at something, right? And don't get me wrong, there is such a thing as common sense and taking a very simplistic view of the world. And we're going to go over that too. Natural law is the natural governing conditions of natures. Now, natural law is operating by three particular things. One is cause and effect, which you may understand through the hermetic principles. The other is time to act, to know, and in being. Okay, in being, standing for presence. Okay, to know, standing for learning, and to act basically representing karma, the long-aided effect of, of your actions and how it ultimately contributes to the world, uh, or understanding what actions to take based on your knowledge, which also takes time and understanding. So everything operates through time. Each one of those things contributes to the other. That's cause and effect. And then you have your reason to recognize all those things to recognize your world, to recognize these words, to recognize um, action, knowing, being, that's operating by reason. So the natural governing conditions of nature are in part operating by your human nature. Because again, we're making the term natural law for a phenomenon within the universe that we're observing. Um, these are laws, very reciprocal uh, according to our effects. Um, so this includes the laws of nature and it includes the natural moral law. Okay, laws of nature would include things like density, thermodynamics, um, inertia, etc. Right? Motions that we know always happen under the conditions of nature. Now, uh, natural moral law is another scenario which we will break into. And that brings us to natural morality. Natural morality is the natural guides to action of natures. Every nature has sort of its, um, its natures within, of course. And so it's going to have impacts depending on each nature. Um, again, 
We're learning. This is all learning. Everything in this presentation is based on education because our knowledge becomes our actions. Our actions become the world. Again, natural law. Okay, so natural morality is a form of natural learning. But ultimately, if we're looking at the human nature, and these are natural guides to action, we're looking at human action, uh, natural morality would include conscience or empathy, right? Particularly looking at human beings. It is a natural result of natural growth. It's a respect toward natures, respecting the natures that are present, right? Maybe to even add to that, natural natures, especially. And seeking objectivity midst subjectivity. What that means is seeking answers, not questions. Seeking justice, seeking order, not chaos, confusion, going with the flow, but not the flow of nature, right? In the, in the sense of going with the flow, not of nature, you're in ignorance. Because if you're, of, if you're looking at nature, you're in reality. There's distinctions to be made, and therefore there's justifications for everything, because everything exists for a reason. Again, going back to how natural law is in part operating by human nature reason. Okay? So if you understand reason, conscience, empathy, these are the natural guides to natural morality, um, and the environments, of course, support each other. We'll get into that too. These are all interconnected. Everything in this presentation is connected. Natural growth is the nurturing of natures. So nurturing would ensure that there is a level of naturalization present, natural effects, and that ensures that growth can occur. That's why it says natural functions are growing able. Think of responsibility the ability to respond. If you don't have the ability to be human, to respond, to drink water, to live your life, are you really naturally functioning as your functions are to function? If you're suppressing your own conscience, for example, because you're order following someone else's uh, demands, are you really thinking for yourself and utilizing your own functions? Okay. And you're also not being suppressed via maybe drugs or things that impair you unnaturally and effects that are undesirable, effects that are not intended for your natural blueprint, your body. So natural growth is development. It's also maturity. It's being able, and therefore that allows independence, and being able allows responsibility. Being able then, in part, allows ownership because you are responsible, because you are independent. These things are all interconnected because as a child grows up, uh, they do not have full reason capabilities. They have parents to guide them. They have teachers, right? And the same thing here with this knowledge, if humanity has not been taught uh, certain things about our world, uh, even at an old age, they still need to increase their reasoning capabilities, still need to understand what the laws of creation are, still need to know more about nature. That learning never really ends. But the question is of their individual reason, if they are able to reason. And as a kid grows older, they develop their own, so they no longer need other people to necessarily guide them because they can guide themselves with their own reason, right? There's many books talking about the great uh, power of reason. Many religions were founded on this idea of reason and then adding faith to the equation. Um, reason is science as well. It's, it's a balance of all worldviews because it's so essential to our nature. Uh, just me talking and finding different ways to explain knowledge is using my reasoning abilities. If I were to talk to somebody who I've never met before, I would reason. If I were to decide what action to take, I would reason. And I would have a reason behind anything that I would do. Otherwise, I'd more likely be unreasonable. 
So growth is ex uh, exemplified through health. We're going to go into health as well, but it's important to understand that growth is an essential process of all living things. Natural learning, an essential growth of natures. Okay, so learning is part of growth. It's an essential part of growth. And it involves obtaining knowledge with all of your own senses. All of your own senses. Again, all of them. Uh, there's consciousness thus involved because you are perceiving events in your environment and the things that are happening within that environment. Again, nature and the natures within, per se. And you have direct senses of natures as well, meaning you're going to look at things face value for what they are or what they naturally I is in, in, in nature, right? <laughs> now, sorry if I sometimes get the wording mixed up here. It's very particular, so I try to be careful. Um, humans naturally learn by reason. Reason must be naturally developed. Okay, so your natural faculties should remain natural faculties and they can ever become even better faculties if that is recognized and if that is grown upon through natural growth, through natural learning of natural growth. And so nature ultimately supports natures. Now there's natural problems as well. Yes, there are natural problems within the world, okay? And natural problems are those problems that cause minimal harm effects within natural freedom. So I'm talking about a very specific type of problem here. These are problems that happen of the natural consequences of action. And many problems happen, um, all problems happen due to the consequences of action, uh, at least if they're human problems especially, okay? But there's a mix between different natures going on. There's a lot to look at when it comes to problems. So it requires a lot of learning. So you see there's a pattern here. Natural growth allows natural morality. Natural morality creates natural freedom. Natural freedom creates natural problems, but natural problems allows natural learning, and natural learning creates natural growth. And then again, you go back, natural growth allows natural morality, and you just go back and forth. Notice it takes learning from problems to grow and thus obtain a sense of morality. The good helps us understand the bad. The bad helps us understand the good. And that is how we learn in this life. So we cannot get rid of that learning. There are natural problems that we have to deal with, and they're there for a reason. They're not a natural problem, however, if it's not so much minimal, if it's not per se within natural freedom, if it's not about natural growth or natural morality. Again, the whole structure falls apart when these problems are unaligned. Again, when people say that you want to align your life to nature, your worldview to nature, how much so? Because I'm looking at everything through the sense of nature in this presentation. So this allows you to really question what it is in your own life or within the world that is there of nature or having a nature of its own that still needs to be understood. And we can go over the processes of understanding where did it go wrong where do we not align to nature? Where must we align more to nature? And that, again, goes back to learning. That's why problems bring us to learning. If it weren't for problems, if it weren't for the unnatural, would I speak so much about the natural? Would I speak so much about nature? Would there be such a need to learn? Well, there always is a need to learn. But why? Because it's in our nature to learn. And that's why there is such thing as natural learning, because again, learning and the faculties we have are built for such. So essentially, you may say we're built to have some natural problems. That's what makes it natural. <laughs> now, next we have natural freedom. 
And natural freedom is the natural condition that allows choice. Okay? It's, may you say, voluntarism, perhaps. Individuals are born free by nature. Free by nature. They are born free. Okay? They're not born slaves, as perhaps six thousands of years of experience uh, people may have believed. But just because they believed it did not make it factually so. Because there is a destiny for humanity, and that lives within their nature. That lives within the nature of who they are and how they come up the situation of other natures within its bound. Uh, what I mean by that is that you have people living with other people, and injustices are able to be seen um, clearly in the light of other natures. We'll get into that more, of course. Individuals naturally have their own reason, as we have established before, but this establishes a sense of freedom because they have their ownership, as we talked about with natural growth. Again, connect all the parts that I'm mentioning within this presentation. To naturally express one's own will or self, that is also freedom. Freedom is also to be naturally unique of one's own nature, because they are unique. <laughs> they have their own self. They have their own reason. So you may say that freedom is natural for individuals, at least if they understand that, right? And embrace it. And even if they don't, if this is the reality to their nature, then again, are we taking on behalf of ignorance or are we taking on behalf of aligning to nature or reality? Natural freedom is recognized by natural ownership and it is recognized by natural individuality. Now, of course, any time I put a word after natural, you can break down all these terms as well, right? And you'll come to similar conclusions as the other terms I'm mentioning, such as natural growth, natural morality, natural ownership, right? All these things, you'll find yourself eventually going in circles, not meant to circle their reasoning, but because it is within the reason that we are all of nature and therefore nothing is actually new under the sun we're going to go over that too of course so we have natural experimentation the natural individual is using natural freedom within of course natural experimentation okay and you can always question the polar opposite of this unnatural experimentation, unnatural individuality, and see where that would lead you within your own reasoning, based on all the other natures you may also understand. And the more natures you do understand, the more widely scoped you're able to understand of anything thereof its nature. So natural experimentation includes creating natural problems, that those problems are going to happen. Again, and it's not something we should necessarily regret, but they're problems that we learn from. Because the only thing you can do is learn and move on and do better. The, it's the natural experimentation is the medium between freedom and effects. Okay, because there needs to be a cause and therefore your cause is experimentation. You don't always know what's the effects of your actions, but you assume that it's going to create certain effects. So you do your best with your reasoning to align to the law, not that you necessarily guaranteed are going to, because it's in your nature, again, to learn just as it is to also have problems that leads to more learning. Now, natural experimentation may include victimless acts, i.e. vices. Okay, so that can happen too on the path toward perhaps becoming uh, more natural uh, or perhaps because you're coping uh, and it may be invoking the inner child nature, right? You're going to make problems as a child, right? Um, children are like to have fun. They like to mess around. They may not be so serious and some people may not like that. Um, their mind might be everywhere. Um, they might be very creative and environments may not always support that. But keeping in mind these things 
such as vices or the childlike nature, which we all have, these things do help us experiment. They could potentially help us innovate. Uh, and they could potentially act as, um, the vices can act as coping mechanisms, the child nature can act as um, e things that help you experiment uh, with understanding more about the world uh, in ways that you would never have as an, as an adult who's stuck in a world that you ultimately want to be a child in. Most people just have this child within them that is ultimately being suppressed. I am assuming within this statement that people have a part of them that is within them, but that's because if they were once a child, they're always once a child, it's always still within them. And being that we go through generations of time in reproduction, uh, it is undeniable that there is a level of influence between the different generations and how much they develop and relate to each other. So these all are, again, relationships and natures that have to be evaluated on their own. And so you can even, of course, keep them in check with natural morality. So again, the child might do things that is undesirable or things that uh, would be seen as wrong. And the vices can lead up to wrongdoing if there's a lack of responsibility. So everything throughout natural experimentation is kept in check by natural morality. And natural experimentation is invoking natural growth for innovation. That's ultimately what experimentation is um, because growth is a natural part of life so much as creativity and freedom is. And so innovation is ultimately inevitable. That's not to say that we will not limit ourselves when we see it as necessary based on our effects. Of course we will. And of course we won't be permitting the things that we don't see is going to help us anymore. But we also have to keep in mind all the natures because we might want to suppress that in someone else and it might actually work uh, for them that they don't get rid of something or that they do get rid of something. Things are dependent upon the conditions, upon uh, certain scenarios. Again, there's a reciprocal nature to it as well. So uh, then we have to look at natural facts. Okay, Natural facts are of the topics directly uh, that are natural. Okay, so it is not political or news related. It comprises of reality or truth. You may say it's also the difference between uh, moral power or political power, as uh, the great abolitionist Aidan Ballou uh, would separate and look at. But it is not political or news related at all. It's just looking at reality or truth. So if somebody were to talk about um, politics in any degree of politics you would immediately universalize what they're talking about and bring it down to earth to a point where there's no externalization but what is simply reality what is simply already existing here and now all of us and so you're not taking any faith-based uh, beliefs on to what's happening in the world you're going based on what you know to be true so it can apply anywhere and at all times. It is the root to all news and problems, so it's even more important. And it helps clear us free from the unnatural. And we have to keep in mind that it is natural to have opinion miss these facts. But the facts are important, right? An opinion should not try to overwrite these facts, nor should the facts even overwrite the opinion. We need to know their placement in the world, because all things, again, exist for a reason. All things exist for a reason. It doesn't matter what it is. And we must understand, then, what place they have. And, again, the effects to what's happening, going to understand the natural versus the unnatural, for example. So natural facts help us understand more about our world and also get us away from when perhaps we are away from reality or truth. Such as, let's say if somebody were to focus on race, when in reality they can just focus on humankind. 
or maybe even more the spiritual kind, right? If you think that's even more important than this human kind, a point to where we can all at least understand it, we can all relate to it because it is of the truth. Now, if we're looking at divisions, because that's what politics and news does, those are not natural facts. Natural facts are the things that actually unite people. They do never really divide, unless, of course, an individual dis divides their own conscience uh, and creates their own contradictions. Then, again, you're looking at a different type of problem that would need to be addressed. So, natural effects are effects that are natural to occur of natures. It also may be known as natural naturalization. It is effects that promote natural natures, right? And you can keep adding the word natural, natural, natural to a lot of different things. The point is, is to say this is what it is. And again, going back to understanding what something is natural, it's something that has always existed uh, and more of nature, right? That of nature. So effects that are more of nature to occur of natures. <laughs> and naturalization is that of which is promoting the natural side of natures, okay? So it is created by learning, natural learning from nature. And all that is natural is to remain natural. And it remains by naturalization. So that's what naturalization is. It's not just learning from nature, it's putting it into practice because you're learning from nature. So you understand what promotes your nature, or essentially what is natural because it's meant to be. So effects that essentially appeal to natural morality, again, because we're looking at um, what is intended there of the law, what is intended uh, there of our reason of, of the effects. So this is all connected. And in order for me to give even greater of an explanation of these things, you would have to go to each and every slide and compare it. Natural professions, that of which is natural to do for natures. Because you're gonna notice um, using a lot of natural learning, natural currency, and if you lose sight of what natural learning is, it might be hard to understand uh, what natural professions is, for example. But, of course, I will describe it in the context of the one slide that I do see. That of which is natural to do for nature, is that is a natural profession. So essentially, you may say it's this, this obligatory uh, thing that uh, you see as essential, this thing that ultimately can help, not something that is counterintuitive, right? This is a more common sense way of saying it, but let's look at what it says in the slide. It creates natural effects for natural growth. It is all done for happiness, fulfillment of natures. Happiness and fulfillment. Of course, this has a great correlation to health. Fulfillment and health being whole. So you're basically allowing yourself to be more whole, holistic as well. It creates natural currency, okay, which we'll also define. Uh, so these, this is essentially a job, right? We use this word job in the modern world. We're looking at natural jobs for natural currency. It is naturally beneficial to everyone and it requires natural energy and natural sacrifice. Natural energy and natural sacrifice, which is essentially similar to that of energy because you're putting expenditure into it. Uh, there's a level of release. Even during digestion, there's a level of release or there's a level of conversion. I've used these terms regeneration and conversion before to sort of um, entitle this uh, idea of sacrifice in the natural sense of where it's actually necessary because one might find it necessary to free themselves if they're in a state of slavery for example but again this requires natural learning and this may make sense most people would go to school if they want to become something like I want to become a doctor I want to become an engineer I want to become this well you have to learn that profession first 
Now, that's not to say, however, just because that's a method of natural learning, that the school is a natural method of education itself. Again, this is why it's so important to look at the nature of everything in looking at what's natural and unnatural to the deepest sense possible to your reason. Because I just made a distinction there that said there's a difference between the school or the teachers within or the materials that are being taught or the student and their ability and their interactions and what they're being told to do, what they think they should do, all these things that would have to be considered in the case of actually learning about the nature of our world. And we do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Of course, when I say things like this, it sounds extremely broad or extremely hard to do. Well, of course it's hard to do, uh, at least in the sense that I'm bringing it up because I'm bringing you the most basic essentials to what ultimately is all of life because we're looking at nature and we're looking at the nature of certain things. So let's look at currency, natural currency. It is that which is natural to obtain. What you get from your natural profession. It includes purpose in life for happiness. Indeed, purpose can be a type of currency. It includes knowledge, time, and attention. These are all other types of currency. It also includes natural objects and items. It provides natural energy or motivation. Okay, so natures are required for another nature. And you have to ask yourself, is, is a paper dollar a natural currency? Or is it representing a natural currency? And you have to break it down in regards to how people view it, why people use it, and if it could be made better with our knowledge of nature. So again, natures are required for another nature. And just simply in the conversion process, um, as it is an individual, which is one nature, uh, is required for the action in the world, per se, right? In order for politics to exist, there needs to be humans. In order for there to be money to exist, there needs to be humans. Therefore, it's dependent upon human nature. Those natures are dependent upon human nature. So natures are always uh, reliant on another nature, and that's how we have to view things as well. There's natural religion, and natural religion is the natural faith based on reason. Again, the importance of reason, sort of this oracle in man, is um, this ability that helps and in, in includes natural learning about natures. So what if a religion, less about worship, more about learning, right? And perhaps learning is a form of worship, because you understand what actions to take that are aligned to that of the God, that of nature, that of your world. And I would argue it's also greatly essential to equate God with nature in every degree possible, since it is, of course, the creation that we're living in. And when we look at the definition of nature in the broadest sense, we're looking at birth, we're looking at environments, we're not just looking at an individual part, we're looking at the whole part as well. So it's everything. And therefore, as far as I can see, it's basically equivalent. Now, based on knowledge with possibilities, uh, religion also is, natural religion, is accepting that things are happening due to our knowledge, but also being willing to see the possibilities that are there because you see them as possibilities, and you may not have enough knowledge to know if they're facts, natural facts, right? So that is um, where I come with the next phrase. It says, based on natural unity from natural facts, because religion should be not something that divides people, but actually unifies them, since they share, again, the natural learning about natures and the natures being universal, should be so much as a natural fact to be unifying. Now, natural religion helps provide natural currency. <clears throat> now, and what I said about the creator and uh, creation, uh, these two things I'm not going to delve deep into. 
okay but the part is the the point is is that things in this life are all interconnected and reflecting okay and that of course also reflects back to natural law and the hermetic principles uh, it is individuals toward nature for natures in the case of natural religion because individuals are seeking out a greater thing than themselves <clears throat> they're seeking out um, the great work they're seeking out the great architect they're seeking out god they're seeking out the buddha they're seeking out um, great text ancient uh, mythologies uh, miracles etc and that doesn't necessarily comprise of natural religion all those things i mentioned but that is within the realm of possibility based on our knowledge and what we do know however is our reason and that of which was within our nature which can help you know fix a lot of things for ourselves a lot of wars were fought over religion so making the distinction between natural religion and unnatural religion can be a very big topic for many people but um, natural religion does help provide natural currency because it gives a level of faith and faith helps move you forward if you were battling a disease or going through a war um, you probably having faith or even having love which is thereof connected um, would give you a sense of um, power power that you're evoking uh, from an exter external source that you're saying well this is the faith that I have and it will push me further further out, out of my own bounds and into greater bounds because I'm seeking greater knowledge a, a greater force at hand even if it's just of course based on reason and I go into this topic uh, which can be summed up as t deism and even as Taoism which describes this natural religion quite well based on reason based on natural law and natural morality so if you take those three things in particular uh, and the Tao and Deism a simple Deism its simplest form uh, you can see that there's unification to be found within all religions there does not need to be wars fought uh, those wars are often fought due to a lot of unnatural problems um, and so it's not something that we should just jump the gun and say that it's just one thing um, again there's connectivity in nature that we'd have to look at the great totality of what is going on that creates a problem it is not so simple but uh, natural religion can be in a good sense as you can see uh, if we understand the world around us and share it with others and find faith in that based on our reason so then we have natural diet and of course you may say well these are controversial topics but I'm seeking unification here based on their natures this is the natural diet just as before was the natural religion which again can be the base nature of every single religion since every religion was created for a reason that's not to say that what they're doing is natural but their foundation perhaps was or the ideas within perhaps can be and so the natural way of eating for your nature is essentially your natural diet it includes natural learning midst natural facts such as if you understand how digestion works in the nature of digestion you can learn from that and therefore assume a diet based upon that look how many times it's been done however there's been a lot of problems and that again is because there's ever the seeking for more knowledge from nature and that learning doesn't stop um, there's always more to learn and we don't know everything as human beings we aren't even really supposed to okay and that's of course why we also have each other and why we develop systems of knowledge and why however we shouldn't get so stuck in those systems of knowledge either so it promotes natural health and natural growth okay um, and again we're looking at natural diets <laughs> so to differentiate from unnatural diets the same thing with religion I think a lot of people if they look at the information that I'm presenting may look at it through the unnatural lens and it skewers their own lens of what the natural diet is 
So I want you to keep in mind, primarily, we're only looking at the natural diet here. You can relate the unnatural diet after you have an understanding of the natural diet, or vice versa. The natural diet promotes natural health and natural growth. We went over natural growth before. It includes learning from natural problems. Okay, now if something does not have all these situations, you have to question, is it really a natural diet? Okay, it is seeking natural effects, a natural diet. It includes and reaps natural currency. Well, because again, energy. And you're getting energy from food, of course, food that is actually benefiting you. And perhaps your your skin is clearing up, perhaps uh, your immune system is stronger, right? You may see this as currency because it's a helping your natures. And again, this is going to relate to natural health, which we have yet to define. Um, but ultimately, natural health is of naturally nutritious uh, natural foods, natural diet. I'm sorry, not natural health. Natural dieting is of naturally nutritious natural foods, both naturally nutritious and a natural food, right? That would constitute a natural diet. Just because some things can have natural effects does not mean that the diet itself is a natural diet. And just because somebody goes on a diet or doesn't say they're on a diet, vice versa, any which way you look at it, also does not constitute that it's a natural diet. Um, we have to look past the labels and look toward the actions, the conditions, what it actually compromises as a nature. So uh, natural environments, of course, when in doubt, you can always look over all these slides and read it for yourself and reflect because the words that are on here are always gonna be more perfect than that of which I speak. Natural environments are the natural conditions of natures. It includes the internal and external, okay? Um, it includes a variety of natural bacteria in life. We're looking at all environments here, internal and external. It provides natural effects and natural health, okay? It must be embraced for all natural growth. It is embraced by natural learning which we see time and time again, the whole point of this presentation. And its effects include natural beauty, clear minds, etc. Okay? Etc. because it's environments. Huge topic. We're looking at conditions of nature, natural conditions of nature. So conditions that support everything throughout. And so um, it must be embraced, however, for growth. Uh, let's say you are in uh, a, an environment that is full of pollution, right? And you are raising a baby there and you're like, well, this is not a good environment to raise a baby in, quite obviously, based on your reason. Maybe it's not so obvious, but it still is bad. That, of course, also depends on your reason, your knowledge. But then you would leave that environment and go toward a natural environment or that which is more naturally supportive. Again, looking at what is more natural based on what is more of nature, right? And um, what has always been of nature, ultimately. So natural medicine is the use of natural natures for natural health. And I would argue that natural health, natural medicine, natural environments, these things are very interconnected, of course, for great reason. And the use in natural medicine is provided by natural effects. Okay, so um, all of natural medicine is used uh, for natural effects, and it may be considered of a natural diet. So someone might equate going on a diet, just eating certain foods as medicine. As the, uh, the father of Western medicine, Hippocrates, said, food is medicine, right? You can see diet being connected to medicine in that sense, but medicine extends past necessarily food and diet, or what we would usually call diet and food. So medicine includes special or synergistic natural plants. It may consist of the nat naturopathic principles. And maybe not even plants, it can include uh, you know, animal products as well, you know, using raw milk, um, raw eggs, raw honey, right? 
These things have been used for thousands of years, raw kefir, fermenting it. These things could be considered medicine to certain people that they wouldn't usually consume within their diet or it is not of their diet, but they're consuming it medicinally. Uh, so a diet may be seen as some as more of a routine, something that is done more often, whereas medicine is used in special scenarios. It may consist of the naturopathic principles, which uh, we will actually define. And natural medicine is best provided by natural learning. Now, naturopathic principles is something that you can certainly learn from. And it is just one type of learning from nature. We're going to go over several. And this whole presentation is as such. But keep in mind, there's been many philosophers of the past, many people who have studied nature. And I'm not the only one. In fact, everything we do is a study of nature, and I'm looking at nature as a whole through this presentation and breaking it down also to its simplest sense. And don't get me wrong, people have also done that. It's not about trying to see who does the best. It's actually better to see uh, for ourselves what better world we can create based on our knowledge. I'm not here to prove anything or to say that um, I have things figured out per se or that it's fun for me to philosophize about the world. Ultimately, my goal is action, and that's why I would like to work on this, wor these topics and these works and form it into huge types of uh, works, but I will invest my time into more of the action side of things, so that way this knowledge may be further seen, perhaps even in the future, or in times where it's most needed, uh, it will come to light and people will explore among, more among it, among it uh, for themselves. So um, natural medicine will revamp a natural currency. Let's say your energy is low and maybe you're on the brink of, of something, right? Well, with natural medicine, you could potentially heal yourself. Now, natural medicine is not necessarily just limited to just using um, plants and such. But keep in mind, that is what medicine is, because I'm saying it's natural medicine, and it says it on the screen, it says plants. Uh, so just keep in mind that even all the drugs you get are coming from certain plants. The question is, how much is it of nature, or is it farther away from nature? <laughs> you know, these are just terms that help you reason to understand more as to the things that I've been saying throughout this whole presentation. But this is how we understand how we ultimately then heal the whole world, not just the body as well. So then we can go into natural health. And natural health is the natural condition of well-being. It's the blueprint that is able for natural effects. Okay, so health is that of which is able for natural effects. Um, it is that coexisting with natural environments, of course, because we're looking at a natural condition and natural environments or natural conditions. The natural condition, natural health is, in all natural natures. So you may say everything has health. Take, for example, Minecraft. It's a game a lot of people know. Well, you can destroy anything, right? And you can create anything. And everything has its own health bar in order for you to destroy it or create it. Think of everything in life as having its own health bar. Certain things even might not go away, but it's going to change in form. And, of course, going back to the phrase, which we'll also explore, there's nothing new under the sun. There's a health to everything, and there's form to everything. Plato and a lot of philosophers also des described about the nature of the forms of things. And you can go deep into all of that, of course. I'm not here to do that. But the point is to understand that all natures have their conditions. And if we are to look at natural natures and the natural condition of those natural natures that makes them so natural, uh, that is looking at natural health. So when of health, okay, when a nature is of its health, there's no need for natural medicine uh, because, well, you're healthy, right? You're in the place that you should be. Uh, you're with the people that you want to be with. Uh, you have the food that provides for your body. Now, you can't say it's necessarily perfect, because when should it ever be? Why should it be? Um, and within nature, it's not to be so, right? Again, observing more natures, not limited to that just of the body, 
To understand the contradictions and the ironies is to understand more of nature. I talk about this all the time. It is required by and for natural morality, natural health. Okay? So health can actually contribute for morality. It is also required by morality. So keep in mind there's actually a connection between morality and health, and that is a strong one to understand. It is expressed and to coincide with natural growth. You would hope that as you get older, you become healthier. And actually, you know, while many people want to say, well, you start to decay, um, it's sort of natural to happen. You got to think of it through that lens. You can still be healthy and have a natural death, <laughs> which is what a lot of people like to describe it as because they simply passed away or found the right time to and things work out better. It's better than having abrupt situations where there's mass disease and a lot of problems that can't be figured out and more problems on top of that. Nobody likes to see that. Nobody likes to see suffering uh, because it's not supposed to happen. That's why they don't like seeing it because it, they, they know that there is a better condition than suffering. They know that there is more to life than suffering and that these people need to live their lives and they deserve it as much as everyone else does. They deserve their life, their happiness, their health. These things are all connected. Naturopathic principles. So naturopathic principles is the practice of natural medicine. And ultimately it's these following principles. First, do no harm, okay? The healing power of nature, identify and treat the causes, Doctor as teacher, treat the whole person, and prevention. I want you to look through these for yourself. Healing Power of Nature recognizes that there's things that we have to look at that are natural that can help heal us. Going back to natural health, natural medicine. Again, Nature Path Principles is the practice of natural medicine. First, do no harm. Well, if you were given the choice between doing a, a crazy surgery, which could cause a lot of complications or taking an herb that can fix it, which one will you do first? Identify and treat the causes. Well, are you going to look at the symptom, which is there of the cause, or just look at the cause itself so you get right to the root and fix the whole problem so it doesn't ever happen again? That connects to prevention. And again, how do you do that? That goes back to first, do no harm. These principles are inter all interconnected, and that's why they're naturopathic, because the naturopathic medicine um, field is focusing on learning from nature. That is what they're focusing on doing. Not that everything that they learn from nature is perfect, just as I can't view everything in nature as perfect, but we can learn from it and learn more than about nature. Naturopathic uh, principle, doctor as teacher. What does that mean? Well, instead of telling someone to just take something and they'll be okay, they teach uh, a client or a patient what their condition is so they may understand how they got into that situation, how they could heal themselves, how they could prevent it, uh, and so forth, or how to even just help them in general in many different ways um, and help themselves ultimately, because the doctor is not the patient, it's not the client. The client and the patient is the p client and the patient. They are their own individual. They have to be the ones to ultimately heal themselves, just as they're the ones to ultimately free themselves. So you can apply these same principles as well to freedom. And we want to treat the whole person. You know, we're not going to put certain people on top of others. And um, just because this one thing is bad, we should impose this law on top of everybody. No, we want to treat the whole person, this whole life, by looking at what is holistic, what is universal, and not just select areas, select countries, select ideologies, none of this stuff. Treat the whole person, treat the whole world. <laughs> okay? And the person is that micro, and the world is that macro. We're treating not just an organ, but the whole body, because whatever we introduce into the body is perhaps healing for the whole body. And therefore, it's in a package, it's holistic. So let's say you were to take dairy, right? And you were to homogenize it, you were to separate its fats and 
uh, heat it up per se, destroy it, take away the fats, add synthetic minerals and, and vitamins. How much do you think it really is of its own nature, right? Is it natural? And in the same way, uh, is it whole? Is it in its whole form, right? We say whole milk versus skim milk. Well, whole milk is milk in its natural form, right? Well, especially if it's raw to add on to that. It's funny because whole and raw, these terms really just represent natural, or at least they should. Um, and we shouldn't have to even use the word whole, raw, or natural, but it's because there's a distinction to be made when there's the presence of otherwise. It's like saying air breathing person or grass fed animal. It's like that should be redundant because all animals should be fed grass just as all humans should be breathing air. But that distinction would need to be made in the scenario where certain humans are not breathing air. <laughs> so that is the dynamic to understand. Again, there's ironies that you learn from the most. Prevention, super important. You can't just look at treatment again connected to just looking at the symptoms you can't do it you have to look at the causes and then you could prevent problems so then we could look at integrative nutrition principles which is the practice of natural dieting okay health is just as important as freedom bioindividuality is listening to your body i hope you do the same thing for your own conscience when it comes to making decisions um, in the world right going back to natural morality so bioindividuality is listening to your body. What is it that I agree to? What is it that I don't? Everybody reacts to food differently because again, everybody is unique of their own nature, not to say that they aren't under the one nature that is the human being, okay? Or again, the organs within the being or the being among the other beings, micro macro goes crazy. Primary food means that life matters more. Anything like career, relationships, exercise, spirituality, those things matter way more than that which is on the plate, which is secondary food, that which is um, food, right? Uh, so the food that really matters most is your lifestyle, the people around you, and that is primary food in integrative nutrition. Heal yourself by yourself, self-healing. Of course, you can make these connections to the naturopathic principles as well. Self-healing means that you, again, are in charge of your own health. And you're ultimately saying, well, even if I'm taking something because someone else told me to, uh, I'm doing this because I know it's going to help me. And my body is still the one that needs to heal itself even when it's being administering something because it needs to recognize what it's being administered and it needs to put it into practice. Just as you do with this knowledge, you take the knowledge and you assimilate it and put it out through the world through your reasoning of not just the knowledge but the action as well and your knowledge of action. So then food changes everything is another integrative nutrition principle. Uh, because it does. Uh, essentially, what you eat becomes your blood, becomes your bones. And we see that when people have deficiencies, your body may start to eat itself in many different ways. It may do things that is not supposed to happen, but your nature is so smart uh, that it will do things to try to survive. Um, and always possible. We're very lucky for that. Um, and but it also comes with many downsides. So we have to respect nature for uh, trying to keep us up as much as possible. And the least we can do is try to help in its progression and in its blueprint to actually make it holistic and work as intended, even optimally, not just sustainably. So uh, geographic proximity is treating the whole area. So let's say you have a problem, perhaps in the bottom part of your body near your feet. Maybe you want to treat the legs too because it's near your, your feet. Maybe, you know, that's a really bad example. Maybe it's the kidney or the lungs per se. Okay, it's a cardiovascular system. Okay, it, you know, and maybe you want to look then, okay, if it is the kidney, let's look at, um, you know, the urinary tract and, and such, then it's treating more of the area rather than just a select organ. Uh, maybe you got to do a whole liver kidney detox because there's stuff there instead of just taking something to mask the problem when you're not actually treating the problem. 
Again, this goes back to treating the cause. And then finally, uh, the last integrative nutrition principle is crowd out by adding in. So when you add in the good, you can crowd out the bad. This also applies to our world because if you can um, add in good foods to the body, then the bad foods you're going to probably want less because you're adding in that of which you ultimately desire and makes you feel great. So why would you ever want anything that doesn't make you feel great? Um, even if it tricks your taste buds for a small moment, is it really worth it? And in the long run, you see that it isn't. Again, based on the law, the laws of the body, the laws of the world, we see the effects of what we do through our actions or through the foods that we add into our body or the actions we add into the world. The same exact scenario. And so, believe it or not, consequences are everywhere and they're always used and people always follow these principles morality is a natural effect um, and even people who say they aren't you know utilizing morality they still are in order to be uh, in our social world we are social beings by our nature so then let's get into the next thing that only relates to all this, whether it be morality or social life. We have natural sexuality. This is extremely important because it deals with reproduction. Again, the laws of nature um, and natural moral law all connect to natural law, uh, and we can't discount one or the other. So there's bestial sides to humanity, there's orderly sides to humanity, and these things all are well within the capacity of human beings. The question is their embrace, their learning of knowledge to choose if they want to uh, be of that bestial side or not, and ultimately be of chaos or order. That's their choice, right? If, if the default base of our world is um, this sort of bestial state uh, of nature, as people will say, state of nature, um, then perhaps, you know, the only alternative is to help rise the consciousness of human beings uh, to the next level, make them higher order uh, in their thinking capabilities for better action abilities. So again, natural growth. So that's why natural sexuality is a natural effect of and for natural growth. Um, it is necessary for the existence of natural growth. I mean, it is necessary for existence, period. Um, because you need reproduction in order for living things, uh, it is utilized by natural learning. And it may include natural experimentation. It is by and for natural morality. It is a natural product of natural health. Well, because if you have low testosterone or not enough hormones, then probably something's going on wrong with your health. So ultimately, uh, you own your own life and its effects only. You have to keep this into account, okay? Because there is the sense of, well, you have these urges or you have these abilities within your life. And again, there's a level of placement, there's a level of responsibility, a level of learning involved. And that goes for all things that you own. So realize that all those things that you own, you are ultimately responsible for, and you should be responsible for yourself. And that includes, you know, the effects as well. And other people can help as well in those effects. And hopefully they do natural learning. They also understand this natural process of experimentation, the natural problems taking place. And everybody can then come to even greater solutions and with each other's help, um, you ultimately create a more natural environment. So connect it in any way you wish. I mean, by now we've divine, defined so many topics that for me to go based off of this, it's sometimes better I just read the slide <laughs> because there's so much I can bounce off of this and say, well, let's relate it back to this, relate it back to that. And so just keep in mind that since only you are responsible for your own actions, um, you are also responsible for its effects and nobody else. Uh, so take that responsibility into your hands and don't try to assume the responsibility for other people's problems. Help them through their problems if you must, uh, perhaps through natural therapy, which is what? Perhaps it's going out in nature, learning more about nature uh, and getting away from the unnatural world uh, and talking with people, uh, 
encouraging your abilities of natural morality, right? And those things are going to keep you in check, just as we talked about before. So natural attraction then relates to this, right? Because love is a huge component as in part of not just energy, but life, but nature, um, but fighting fear and creating a world that we want to live in based upon nature. So natural attraction doesn't just apply to love, but you can love material things too. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> you can be attracted to nature itself even. So the natural expression of natural love, the natural expression of natural sexuality. It's a similar nature. It's basically similar natures inclined toward another. Okay, similar natures uh, here or there, they don't have to be all similar. The point is, is that at the core, it is similar. At the core, it is. Because otherwise, the, it is not uh, natural. It is, there's no inclination. Um, there is a level of human beings wanting to do good naturally, just as there is a level of human beings wanting to uh, continue their life naturally. Right. And when people don't want to be healthy, they don't want to find love, they don't want to continue living their life. You have to question why that would be. OK, and there's levels then to which um, you have to question on behalf of the natural and unnatural. So natural attraction amidst uh, similar nature is inclined to toward another. It includes following your heart above all. It is upheld by natural environments, and it may act for that of natural health. Now, of course, when I say following your heart, rather unspecific, it's more of just a sort of expression to say follow your heart. Uh, people don't know where that feeling comes from, but I'm sure you know what I mean. And you can say conscience as well, relating to natural morality. Again, since we're looking at natural sexuality, it's the same deal. Um, so you can connect both these terms. Uh, it may act for that of natural health, right? Um, and it constitutes natural spirituality or religion. Okay, so if it makes you feel better uh, to talk to others, to uh, be in good uh, social life with others, uh, and attract your, your life with things that you know is going to help you, then that's great. You know, you're attracting foods that you know are going to help you as well. You're ultimately creating natural health. Again, everything has a sense of health. It's the natural conditions going into the environments. <clears throat> My gosh, the connections are starting to drive me crazy. But that just shows you the integralness of our world. And so when it comes to spirituality and religion, you can attract it back because, again, if religion is supposed to be unifying, then that implies some sort of attraction. And if people like that, then there has to be a level of love involved. There has to be some sort of natural attraction. Um, natural attraction is always at work within our world, and you can't get rid of it so long as humans, again, are natural uh, to have the ability to... Um, have their freedom to sexualize, to um, uh, harmonize, socialize, etc., with the world around them. And so, uh, natural intelligence, and of course, you can connect all that with natural freedom. You can go through all the connections yourself because it would take me way too long to go through all of them. So, let's look at natural intelligence because that's ultimately then looking at all these crazy connections and being like, oh my gosh, like I am now, looking at how all that ultimately piles on top of itself. Natural intelligence is the intelligence natural to natures. It consists of utilizing natural learning, and it consists of knowing natural law. Okay, a lot of people talk about artificial intelligence. Well, again, you can make the contra contrast there. Uh, the root to all other forms of intelligence is natural intelligence. It emphasizes no need of additional natures. There's no need because it's natural intelligence. It's already within us the ability to learn, uh, the ability to utilize intelligence. So perhaps there's no need for that uh, artificial type when we utilize more of our natural type. Uh, or better yet, understand that it is more important and it should always be upheld above all. It is utilized by nature's natural powers. Okay, so the natural powers there of nature's, we'll define that. And it's what allows natural human optimization because you're becoming intelligent because you have learned. 
It consists of utilizing natural learning. All this was learning. So learning all this constitutes intelligence. And there you're using essentially your own nature for greater natures, which is that of being perhaps may you say enlightened, spiritually wise, the wisdom of nature, just as this presentation is, that's ultimately what you're achieving through your learning, through your optimizing. So what is it that is ultimately being used for natural intelligence? It's your natural powers. It is the natures which obtain natural intelligence. For humans, it includes intuition. For humans, it also includes emotion. For humans, it includes brain consciousness. For nature, it includes natural laws. For knowledge, it includes reason. So again, looking at the natures within nature, uh, you can see then this is what ultimately helps drive the natural intelligence, um, or may you say the blueprint. Of course, these words are interchangeable. Words are very faulty just by their nature of the fact that they could be used so uh, interchangeably. So. Don't expect the words to be perfect. That's why, again, natural laws rely on reason. Reason is not limited to words. Use your reason above all. I'm not here delivering you a hundred different scientific studies saying, this is why this is, and this is why that is. First of all, all that's still based mostly on faith and belief, okay? I'm asking you to reason for your whole world and the universe. I have a video talking about how nature is the, the greatest source, the greatest source of all um, you know, um, all formatting, all everything, right? All uh, citations, sorry, that's the word I was looking for. And I even have a video talking about natural intelligence versus artificial intelligence. So what you must know is that every nature has more natures thereof. And of course, we said this type of thing many times throughout the presentation, just through different words. Um, and you're going to start seeing these themes, hopefully, throughout this whole presentation. Natural change, gradual, synergistic change for the natural. It is integrating the natural minds of people. It is promoting the natural minds of people. So not just bringing them together, but promoting their togetherness or promoting their simple ability to think. Not just allowing their minds to simply uh, be of one another, but allowing them to think for themselves. So it's gradual synergistic change for the natural. That is what natural change is. And it's from our knowledge that comes all actions. From our actions comes the world. That's how everything naturally changes. And everything is constantly changing naturally. So again, that's why it is law. Because law is that of which is the aggregate. And ultimately, if our actions become the world, then there is such a law that governs human behavior. So it is assisted by all natural natures, natural change, because you're uh, uh, promoting the change of which is natural. And it is coexistent with or for natural effects. So if you want to know what change is considered natural, you have to look at that of which is coexistent, that being natural effects, uh, and relating the two slides together, as I said to do previously. You can do that with any of these, right? If I say, Nature, you can go back to the nature slide. If I say natural, you can go back to the natural slide. If I say intelligence, you can go back to the uh, intelligence slide. If I even say minds, you might connect that to intelligence. Think of it as such. Natural leadership. Now, natural leadership is the practice of naturally influencing others. It is done with natural powers, done out of natural morality, requires natural learning, and it is showing by example. In other words, inspiration. It is being a guide of the natural. It is leading by the way of nature, which is also called the Tao, which we'll also define here. So the way of nature is known as the Tao. And this is at least the term that was used anciently, which I chose to use for this presentation, this work of mine. And so if you're being a guide of the natural and you're showing by example and you don't seek authority, you naturally influence others, it's very much different leadership perhaps than that of which we've had for 6,000 years 
when there was slavery, when people are claiming that they have more rights than others or claim that they have the right to ownership over the life and property of another human being. How in the world is that natural when individuals do not naturally um, are born slaves? They're, they're given that by an imposition, a claim upon their life, their being, their very essence, their nature. Because that's what got people. The fact that people thought slavery was natural, that government is natural. I'm sorry it isn't, unless you're looking at natural government or natural slavery. And what is natural slavery? I mean, you can break down all these things, but then at some point you might realize, well, if, it's, if it doesn't exist, how is it natural? You know, and because we can make many things that don't actually exist in reality, or have no basis in reality, so there is no point of distinction or there's no amount of limiting that could ultimately change it. It must be abolished. It must change completely, not through alteration, but through abolishing. That's what happened with chattel slavery in the 1800s. It's a perfect example. And the way they did that was through natural morality and an appeal to natural law. And they did that. That was their main basis. And it ultimately worked, even if not everything thereof was natural. It did get the effect done. And it did create an effect that is worth learning from. Now, other natural examples may include natural birth and natural sleep, because these are two things that people can look at as an example within our life uh, of things that are natural, right? Now, birth, um, if it's done naturally, would be uh, through the vaginal part of the woman body, and there would not be vaccination throughout the process, okay? That's not to say there shouldn't be any, uh, but it's to say that naturally there is not, and there would be a natural environment to support it, which likely plays into the fact that there should not be vaccination <clears throat> without keeping all the other natures intact in through its understanding um, you may justify something unnatural because of an unnatural environment for example but does that mean that that should then be permitted or allowed just because of that scenario just because something happened that's unnatural does that justify an unnatural solution to essentially um, not look at the root cause but just keep treating the symptom well, it's temporary. If it fixes the pain one might have, well, they might do it, right? Uh, especially in a world that is very fast-paced or a world that is constantly um, through their repetition, through everything being as such, that that is the way they figure to change things. Now, natural sleep would be uh, hours sufficient to sleep. So let's say uh, you get the amount of hours that is necessary for the amount of energy that is sufficient for your body. Uh, the REM cycle would be that of which is sleep in its deepest state. And the circadian rhythm would be sleep done regularly or even eating regularly. I mean, then that would relate to natural eating. I mean, you'd have to break down each and every single thing. Natural timing, uh, natural time <laughs> itself, right? Because if we're looking at hours sufficient and not so much the body and when it's ready to wake up, uh, how much are we actually naturally sleeping? So you see how you can break things down and you can understand what is intended there of sleep, what is intended there of birth, what is intended there of anything within this life. And you can evaluate anything ultimately by its natures. So that brings us to a tool that I created that can help us know more about the whole nature of anything, anything in the world. And I call this the nature dynamic. The simple or true nature is the intended use or function, that of which is for. The base nature is the requirements, that of which is from. The core nature is what it's made of, that of which of which it's of, sorry. <laughs> the second nature is the impacts or effects. It's the second simple nature. It can be the nature of something. 
Okay, now I'm gonna, I can give you an example, of course, and I have videos t basically devoted to what the nature dynamic is and providing multiple examples such as, well, everybody knows an apple is a fruit, right? Well, it's a type of fruit, and that's what brings us to the optional descriptives. The general nature is a type or form, a blank, a fruit in the case of an apple. The higher nature would be a greater simple nature. So for a what? Well, <laughs> for a nutritious uh, fruit, may you say, right? For a nutritious um, hanging uh, fruit from a tree, right? And the intended use or function, what would be the intended use of an apple? Well, for fulfillment, for health, right? So for greater health is that higher nature because you're eating an apple to make your, you, you yourself feel even better, make your health even better than it was uh, w without the apple. So you have the intended use, which is the simple nature, and the higher nature brings it to the next level and says, well, it's not just for health, it's for greater health than the health that is currently at work. That is why it's being used. And the requirements of that apple is that you have to grow it. <laughs> so you have to grow the apple. That's the base nature. The core nature is what it's made of. Well, it's made of simple sugars, right? It's made up of uh, these simple carbohydrates and it's got skin, it's red, right? All these things that make up its core nature. And then the second nature, it's impacts and effects. Well, maybe it's too much sugar. It can cause glycemic, maybe the nature of whatever was in the other parts of the nature. Okay, that's why it's a second simple nature. It can simply be um, for enjoyment, not for health. It could be for enjoyment. Uh, so it could be the nature of enjoyment. It could be the nature of, um, of, of growing food and, and experimenting, right? It could be the nature of sugar. It could be the nature of fiber. It could be the nature of carbohydrates, anything thereof. Uh, what we know is of the base, simple, and core nature. So. This is just a brief underlining of what the nature dynamic is. If you want more information, you can check out my video dedicated to that. It's a very short video. Um, but hopefully I gave a brief underline of what this is and you can ultimately turn it into a sentence. So for health from growing the plant, you can add multiple words if you want, of sugars and fiber can be the nature of sugar, <laughs> right? Uh, enjoyment, right? A fruit for a greater health. And you and so you can do this with anything and it helps you understand more as to what the nature of something is. We covered everything of what an apple is essentially. And there's nothing more that really needs to be said. An apple is a very basic object too. So uh, the more basic you go, maybe it might be more hard to break it down, but you can still ultimately break things down. Uh, it's it's always there's always a way to do it. It's dependent upon our knowledge of nature's, and ultimately then that provides perspective. The nature dynamic. Uh, also, I have this chart, right? So this chart basically summarizes everything that we talked about within this presentation. The difference between natural and unnatural in a very coherent way that you can look at it and you can then break it down for yourself. Uh, this is, again, just summarizing all the things we talked about before, but just putting in a chart to make it a little bit easier to understand. That of which is natural is right to exist. It's based and intended of truth and natures. It's of and for birth, law, health, and life. It naturalizes. It promotes and allows growth, learning, preservation, defense, and function. All in nature is inherently natural and is to remain by naturalization. It is created by learning from nature or conscious creation. What is unnatural is wrong to exist, and not based and intended of truth in nature, not of and for birth, law, health, and life. It denatures, degrades, and weakens inherent functions by way to change and replace natures. And all in nature may denature to become more unnatural. It is created by willful manipulation or unconscious creation. So again, the importance from learning from nature versus being ignorant of natures, uh, or just not simply learning uh, from the most natural sense of things. 
uh, not seeking the intent, not seeking the reason, not seeking anything outside of your own ideology or box that you've built for yourself, ultimately. So, with all this said, somebody might say, well, you're using the appeal to nature fallacy by talking about what is nature, what is natural, and maybe they kept that in mind this whole entire time and therefore thought everything I said was unjustified. Well, what if I said there's a natural appeal to nature? <laughs> the appeal to nature is indeed natural. Natural is natural in an unnatural world because it sparks that level of mystery within individuals that something is not right. And how do they know it's not right? They know it's not right based on the effects. Based on effects that are what? Undesirable? Effects that don't help people in pretty much every way possible it comes to be. And that's how we get chaos. So there is a distinction to be made. Not just between good and bad, but between natural and unnatural, which is very much related. Again, going back to natural morality, the appeal is dependent upon natural knowledge. Okay? Knowledge. <laughs> this isn't just an appeal to nature. I say, oh, well, it says natural on the label, so I must therefore buy it. No, it's an appeal to nature with knowledge to say this is why it's natural. And I might even be wrong, but based on my understanding of nature, I'm going to choose this because I see it to be more natural through my reason through the reasons of how much it is natural, according to my knowledge, of the natures. <laughs> now, just because a nature naturally occurs, does not make it natural to nature. Again, we have to look at natural effects, and naturalization versus denaturing. Nature is right because it is natural law. You cannot refute what is law. You cannot refute what is. So therefore, nature is always right. And this is exactly what the appeal to fallacy does not want people to make, is to say that what is natural is right. Because it isn't always. I'm not saying what is natural is always right. I'll go over that. But what I'm saying is that nature is right. Because that is the blueprint to our world. That is the source of our world. That is the world. <laughs> so you saying that there's a fallacy is simply describing a, a nature, one nature within the world of nature. And if you assume you're right, then there's another situation to look at, right? Natural people intuitively know what is, for example, nutritious or moral. It is not doctrine. I want to make this clear that through understanding all the things of which is natural, you're more of a natural human being. And I'm not kidding when I say that. You're a natural human being. And it's funny, I look at the camera because it's a... to have it by now for me because it's become natural for me to do so. But is it natural for me to look at a camera? <laughs> Probably not. It's natural to look at people's face and talk to people face to face. Not necessarily talk to myself through a screen, but because it's become natural to use technology, which is a product of natural socialization, which is a product of natural freedom, and you'd have to break down all of that. The point is, is that natural people can look at all that and understand their time and placement, could understand their truths and untruths, could understand the multitudes of perspective, could understand what's a nutritious food and what's a moral thing to do. So it's based upon their knowledge. A natural person is somebody who has all their reason intact and has looked at all the reasons because they're looking at all the natures. They're of course going to make a nutritious uh, assumption of their diet or a moral assumption of their action. It is not doctrine. It is natural to happen when in the case of natural knowledge which again goes back to natural intelligence, which then goes back to natural learning, which comes back down to learning from our senses, just getting a direct understanding of what nature is. And we've strong, we've fell far away from that. So I use this phrase, nature is the answer, and I've created a movement based upon this. And I don't want people to look at it so deeply as I have in this presentation. I really don't. I want people to take it just as it is simply as it is 
nature is the answer, period, nothing more, nothing really less. It doesn't need to be some philosophical thing where we have to evaluate every little bit of it. It's to understand the basic reason behind it. To say that technology can be the end of humanity, or that governments created by man could be the end of humanity, and have been causing millions of countless deaths throughout the world, democide the number one cause of unnatural death, that is concerning. And so, even just looking at natural medicine versus all the profits people have made off of, well, what people call big pharma, right? The medication industry, the pharma industry, and how much harm they've done people, and the unnatural diets that people have gone into, or just diets, period, that have restricted people because diets within themselves are not natural. Unless, of course, they're a natural diet. <laughs> so, any answer has a nature under nature, and every question seeks natures. Man does not abide or depend upon man. Man shall abide to and depend upon nature. All created natures are to help man. The natural questions the unnatural, and the natural natures are greater answers. And when I say greater, you may even say natural answers. <laughs> so, of course, we've explored all about this already within the presentation. And this is just summarizing why nature is the answer to a little bit deeper of a sense to say, I'm not just looking at nature as a whole, but all the natures within, that if we learn from the world around us, that's all this phrase is saying, is learning is the answer, right? Because we want to learn from nature. That's what science, religion, all these things we're trying to do. So let's not stray away from nature itself, right? And let's not get stuck in these other ideologies that were the product thereof and think that that's all there is. Well, then we forget the root. Of course, we're going we're gonna to fall. We're living by the symptoms. We're living by the creations of other people. We're not creating for ourselves and making our own observations. We're not using our own nature. We're giving our natures away to others or straight out just not encouraging our own natures at all. So... The all is nature. Everything is natural, and we cannot fully deny such. I said that. I said, you know, there is, everything is under nature, right? But there's natures within. And that's why this next sentence says, what we can deny is that which is no longer fully natural. Everything that humanity has abolished existed for reasons we must understand. I think a good example is natural government versus unnatural government. Natural government would be the government of God. It is not created by man. It is not, there's no laws per se. You may say there's principles, right? Like these principles, perhaps, the integrative nutrition, naturopathic, uh, hermetic principles, all these things, not aggression principle. These things are principles, natural principles at best, with reason. And but what, what are man-made laws? These are things written on pieces of paper to be imposed upon everybody else. And that is not natural. That, and, and it requires man to exist. It requires man's belief that it is necessary to exist. But a natural government does not require belief. It is government. And it simply must be understood as government in order for it to be fully lived in and embraced. So... That means that freedom, anarchy, is government, which is crazy to think, or that nature is government. But we don't look at it like that, because we're, we're basically detached from nature to look at it like that. And that's the truth to the matter, and that's why I talk so much about it, because it's one of the biggest truths in our world. And among the lines of abolishing, slavery has always been around with government, because otherwise governments would not make any money. And in order to keep people controlled, they need to be in debt to these governments. Otherwise, they are not in control. So humanity would abolish chattel slavery because they saw it was unnatural, right? And therefore un immoral, both. And that, that's the correlation they understood. The same thing has to be made for that of government, which still keeps people in commercial, political, economic slavery every single day. But it's still just general moral slavery 
Because anybody with, a own, with their own conscience would realize very quickly that government is nothing more than a monopoly on violence. They have the guns, they have the violence, and they decide what actions to take on behalf of everybody else, impose their will on others, and anybody would agree that they own themselves, that involuntary interactions are bad, that they would perhaps want a voluntary government, but then it wouldn't be government, and that they should own their own life and property. That means taxation is out of the equation. You're basically left with no government once you break down the understanding that somebody recognizes their own nature. So then, that's why I talk so much about it. And that's why I say government needs to be abolished and why I'm an abolitionist. Now, I don't call myself a naturalist. I could say that, sure. But there's so many titles and I don't want to use any title because naturally there are no titles. Abolitionism is simply a movement that is to prompt upon an action. I may call myself an abolitionist simply to emphasize the action, but am I really? I'm just a human being. Because why would I want to be an abolitionist if I'm saying something is there that doesn't need to exist? Sort of redundant, right? Sort of contradictory, um, but on purpose. So, nature is always... Um, Sorry, everything that humanity has abolished existed for reasons we must understand. It is always, it always is due to the introduction of a nature, such as morality, right? Such as the government of God, to say, well, man is not subjected upon another man, therefore slavery is illegitimate. In order for something to be fully natural, you would need to have the eyes of God, equivalently, all that is good. God, good, same thing, even if you don't think it is. And, again, the same thing with nature and good. Um, and these things have been word magic, word play, for centuries on end, on purpose. Because they knew this would, this would be how they manipulate people. Words are power. Knowledge is power. That's why this stuff is important to me. And so, uh, just keep in mind that none of us have the perfect eyes to see everything exactly as it is but we can only understand more of it, do our best to. Now, since no human is wholly capable, no system shall be wholly imposed, thus nothing can be wholly denied either, because it's an impossibility of nature if it's a possibility to be done in nature. So slavery will always exist, wrongdoings will always exist, the question is the aggregation, uh, and if there's no system, there's no aggregation of such a problem. Um, now, wholly denied, well, if most people generally agree that something should not exist, then you may say that's wholly denied, but if somebody tries to wholly deny it by saying, well, it cannot happen ever because we're going to violently ensure that it doesn't, then that is something that is against nature because you can't bend the will of nature. But that's what all governments have tried to do forever. So, essentially, what must be done is you must let what shall be, be, but for all nature, okay? So let what shall be, be. And this connects well, greatly, to the Tao, which I will read from soon. For nature best seeks its own, otherwise its nature is not whole. Nature seeks that its own blueprint is fulfilled, such as that of the body. And if you don't fulfill it, well, you get disease. It's the consequences of your actions, the consequences of not fulfilling the nature. Okay, so nature speaks of its own. It speaks for itself. It doesn't need us, but we can recognize it and we can speak it to others and therefore help ourselves <laughs> in this process of nature ultimately helping itself. Because it will help itself. If humanity is ignorant to their own problems, nature will help itself easily by destroying the whole human species. And it has probably no problem doing that, honestly. Okay? Uh, whether you want to say it has feelings or not, etc. I'm not to say, because I'm not nature. Again. There's a time and place for all things which requires the learning of natures, which in turn provides perspective. Okay? Perspective is super important because it means that you've learned from natures. This is why a lot of people want to be very um, passive or centrist to a lot of positions because it keeps them not only in a place of safety, but in a sense of understanding or openness to everything that is being digested. 
The problem is, is that there is positions that need to be held on certain things. Otherwise, you just don't get anywhere. There needs to be a level of I'm going to stand here, going to stand there, or I'm going. Now is my time to move in. Now is my time to heal my body. Otherwise, you might miss the opportunity, and that opportunity will cost you forever. So, uh, centricism and such uh, is just not applicable because it's just not realistic. So there's always going to be positions, there's always going to be ideologies, people pushing for certain things. The point is you can have perspective and you can still um, have your own perspective. And you can have perspective and you can still do things um, and know what you're doing yourself with your own perspectives. So use it as more of a guide toward your own grounded action, but still have action. And don't be entirely passive, but understand that no problems are done if they're not created, right? So it's humanity that creates the problems. If they're not permitted, then they cannot grow. So it's, it's a really simple logic as such, and the Tao Te Ching talks more about this, but it is ultimately very basic wisdom of nature that we can ever understand for all of life and in the future especially when we abolish systems that don't need to exist uh, and we don't want to cause any more problems it's a great philosophy i would say to uphold in any case of scenario and if everybody minded their own business as such uh, we wouldn't be in any of the problems that we live in today the problem is the select few that do impose their will but mostly the millions that follow them so people need to mind their own business in every way possible every single way possible and they can still enjoy each other's company they're just not doing anything wrong to anybody right they're respecting nature and they're providing perspective so uh whatever way you want to look at it i've worded it a billion times already but nature is the ever and the all and we can always learn from it. Here's a diagram that particularly describes more of everything as well, in case you need more um, diagrams to help you understand what I'm saying. So you have something that is nature, which is everything, right? That is all of life. And within nature, you can have freedom or slavery, okay? Now, freedom is ultimately nature itself. Slavery is something that seeks to overturn nature and be nature itself. And the more unnatural as a whole humanity becomes throughout the board, cross the board, everything, is the more slave-ish we become. And the more natural everything goes across the board, the more free we become. Okay, so this is the dynamic here. It's less about... You know, so I, I know people want to talk about objective morality is the only answer. It's not the answer. The answer is just morality itself because the answer is nature itself. So it's not so much about this particular type of thing, but rather the thing itself, the ability itself. Okay. And so then, of course, connecting his perspective with it because words are tricky. Um, now, being, when you simply be, you're going to naturalize you're going to be of nature okay because you're not contributing to any problems that's why the being uh, has an arrow pointing to the left uh, of course the dot in the middle represents nature uh, any nature of a certain kind so it could be more natural more natural depending on of course its nature <laughs> based on learning about it and its effects as such and Notice there's a question mark on the left-hand side with an arrow that points right and then goes back left. The reason why is because when you are in a position uh, where you have some natural senses or natural abilities, you question what is unnatural. Okay, so basically man is the question. Reversing nature is the answer. And that makes you understand that nature is the answer even more. So because you're questioning, it allows you to seek the answers. That's essentially what that uh, those two symbols mean there. And so keep in mind, the natural is also the ever. Nature is the all. Uh, your being is dependent upon your habits, which come there of the acts. And the acts and the habits contribute to your conditions, which contributes to your being. These are all connected. So that applies anywhere across the board here. 
So just keep that in mind, like for example, slavery is a condition that is created through actions of beings, right? So uh, same thing with freedom and same thing with what is natural and unnatural since we're looking at basically a title of what is happening. But slavery can also not just be a condition as it is government, as I talk about in my book, Slavery Gone for Good, but it can be an action which is what contributes to the condition. Same thing with freedom. It could be an act of freedom, such as you exercising your rights, exercising your freedom to say, well, oh, I can speak whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. That's, a, that's an act of freedom, an exercise of freedom. So your acts do contribute to the conditions on both ends. All right, next slide. We have natural simplicity. I said simplicity is very important because as much as I want to complexify everything here, what I'm saying is ultimately very, very simple. And I said it's basically just being, right? Because if you're just being, no problems are being created, no problems can grow, and you're simply embracing the nature that is. But if you are being in an unnatural system and you're not fighting that unnatural system, there's problems, and that's what prompted this presentation. Um, that's what prompted um, us looking deeper into, well, maybe we should also act and know when's the right time not to act because there is a time and place for everything. So here is a quote from Nature, which was a lengthy text by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Great text. And it states, to speak truly, few adults few adult persons can see nature. Most persons do not see the sun. At least they have a very superficial seeing. The sun illuminates only the eye of the man, but shines into the eye and the heart of the child. The lover of nature is he whose inward and outward senses are still truly adjusted to each other, who has returned, who has retained the spirit of infancy even into the era of manhood. So, Again, the child, inner child nature is very important. We talked about that earlier. Um, looking at senses and how that's important amidst uh, natural learning, very, very important. I used to use the word census uh, as my motto, my phrase <laughs> for when I was my inventor, going through my inventing phase when I was younger. But let's be honest, I'm still inventing things all the time because I haven't lost that inner child within me. I'm very creative and I embrace that. I think it's great and it's simplistic and I don't view the world through the news and what's happening. I don't need the news, it's not important. It's externalizing everything. I look at things through natural facts, which is very simplistic and it's a relief off my mind. It's not stressful at all. I'm looking at what's important, what affects me, what I can affect. Right? I want people to mind their own business. That's it. That's the message. That's the mission. Nature is the answer. Modern abolitionism. Slavery gone for good. <laughs> that's my book. And that's all. Get rid of that which doesn't belong. Integrate with that of which is right. That of which is natural. That of which is nature. Slavery is not natural. And if it is, then it's not slavery. Right? It's reality. The way of nature, known as the Tao Te Ching. Uh, this is a book that is very, very old, and it talks a lot about nature. Um, it's titled The Way of Nature, translated to the Tao Te Ching. And it states, quote, One who lives in accordance with nature does not go against the way of things. He moves in harmony with the present moment, always knowing the truth of just what to do. Again, just what to do at the present moment. So he's, so you're being and you're knowing the time and place for all being. It's a form of natural religion like simple deism, Taoism that is. And it's that of which the natural powers must align to because it's looking at the way of nature. And it helps provide guidelines for natural leaders, which we went over. Now here are some quotes that come natural too many people. They come natural because a lot of people will say things like this uh, in reflection to this presentation, in reflection to just nature in general. 
They may say, quote, get with the times. Well, the response to this is the present depends on the past. Quote, there's nothing new under the sun. The response to that is that natures are under nature. And then there's this one, quote, what's natural isn't always good. My response is good. <laughs> you know natural morality of natures. Quite ironic because they're claiming something to be right when they're talking about something not being right. And you often have this in the case of moral relativism, the contradictions are endless. But the point is, I'm not saying that objective morality is the solution either. Again, I said morality, just natural morality, people simply embracing nature, the basic things most important in life. It's really the simple things in life that need to be cherished. Love, family, you know, friends, it's, it's simple things and we should be grateful all the time. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. I'm going to wrap up this presentation with uh, a poem based on the title of this presentation, uh, Sapientia uh, Naturae. Nature has already won. It is already won. The wisdom of nature is found in some, but it is the teachings known to none. That provides the truth in some, one. Humanity ever has to realize reason a ton. But the war they wage with the D natures is but their own slavery among, while freedom provided by and with natures is but more their own as much as the sun. Thank you very much. My name is Corey Edmund Angelot. I applaud your learning of nature and your seeking of wisdom upon this matter. You may always seek the wisdom yourself always and share it with others always encourage their very ability to because that is their nature and that is what we're all talking about here is the simple basic ability to simply be the basic ability to be of nature nature to be nature and you to realize that nature is the answer as we do know so because it is our life our world and it is ever destined of humanity to recognize that it is um, while they make many answers uh, or why they while they ask many questions of their own so so do so be always uphold the truth and do not forget who you are always thank you very much i love you as a human being and I will always be there in spirit for all beings throughout all time. Nature is the answer.